Hello, everyone, and welcome to Post ProRes for the month of November 2023. My name's WH Park, and uh, joining me uh, from here on out, we'll just say, is Karen Peterson. <laughs> Hello, Karen. We're making it official, WH. <laughs> That's right, making it official. <laughs> We're making it official. Um, yeah, I mean, just so people know, like, you know, usually for traditionally this show has been John Pollock and myself, but you know, John, John is a very busy man. <clears throat> Excuse me. He's a, he's a parent. He's, he, he co-owns, co-runs the site with waiting. They're very, both of them are very busy, busy people. So, you know, like we thought, well, who's as qualified as John Pollock to come <laughs> on the show with WH Park to talk about Japanese wrestling? Well, none other than our very own, Sensei Karen, Karen Sensei, however you want to be referred to as Karen, Karen Peterson. So th this post Perez is the Park and Peterson show uh, from here on out. Occasionally, maybe it'll be <laughs> Park Peterson and Pollock and, and, and maybe occasional guests. I'm thinking end of the year, I might invite somebody to come on the show with Sounds us. Good. Talk about the, the year, year, year in review for uh, for Japanese wrestling. Um, but have you been, Karen? I've been well. I, I can't believe it's already been a month since you and I last recorded post pro res, but life's good. It's slowly starting to feel like autumn here, it, but you know, it could go back up to summer temperatures by the weekend. So who knows? <laughs> it was, I went, I went to get my uh, flu vaccination and, and the new COVID boost. Uh, not, it's not a booster actually. It's a COVID vaccine. It's a new, the COVID bivalent, vaccine, the bivalent yeah. to take care of the new, the new variants. Like I got, I booked both of them at my local pharmacy and I was, I left the house, I was going out the door and then like five minutes into my walk. So I thought, I'm gonna, it's, it's like a, maybe a 15 minute walk away from me. So I thought I'll just get some fresh air, get a bit of walking done. I was freezing. I had my fleece <laughs> like hoodie on, like it's, it's, it's pretty good. Right. But I actually wore a short sleeve shirt because like you want to roll up your sleeves to get the needle. Yeah. Right. So I was like, no, got to go back. I had to get another layer to put that <laughs> on. And then I went back and I was just like, it was minus three outside. I, there like, ain't no shame in a layer game when, especially in the winter. So, it, it, like 1 p.m. here in Toronto, it was like it was minus three. It was quite, much more comfortable today. It was like I say closer to one or two, like above freezing today. So uh, that's all Celsius for you American people. So you're you, you're not thinking, my God, it was minus three. You, how did you survive without a hat? Went, uh, uphill both ways in the snow. <laughs> right. uh, back in my day, we had to walk to school. <laughs> you know. So, anyways, you know, you know what I've been experimenting with, Karen here on here on the stream yard gimmick. Uh, what banners. have you been experimenting with? I, I've, been experimenting, so I, I've, I've got a banner for us. <laughs> that makes yes. me happy. There you go, WH Park and Carrie Pearson giving you the rundown on the major happenings. Or non happenings in Japanese wrestling. It, we're we're in that weird like end, like pre end of the year sprint where it's like everything's starting to get set up for like the new year, but at the same time, it's like everybody needs downtime to prepare for the that last sprint once December comes. Well, you know, here's a plug for the uh, for the YouTube video because usually we record this on on Streamyard and we do the video portion for for the YouTube channel at you know YouTube uh, slash YouTube.com slash post wrestling. Um, I, I have written this, the description for this show, and 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 I, I feel it's kind of a bit funny. So, like for all of you just listening to this, you know, go go get <laughs> go, go to the YouTube channel. All right, go find the show. Right, you if you if you clicked on this through the postwrestling.com, there's a link to the YouTube uh, show version of this. It's worth it. Just 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 you don't need to watch the whole show. Okay, if you listen to this already, just you want to know what I'm talking about. Just just go read the, read the description and then hit, hit a like. And subscribe, hit that notification bell. Oh, wow, I've, I'm just doing the whole YouTube uh, <laughs> selling here, right? Oh my god, I'm, I'm doing a YouTube you. pitch here. This, hit that notification bell, don't miss out on new shows. Blah blah blah. You know, why you're at it, just don't be a freeloader either. Just just sign up for uh, just sign up for, <laughs> for to be a YouTube cafe. member. What the post wrestling cafe, sign up there, come hang. <laughs> no, but there's also a separate, you know, for YouTube members. Oh, if yeah? they don't want to sign up for the Patreon, and they want to sign up for the cafe, but they want to just get all the YouTube uh, co content, the stuff that's, you know, this is free. You know, most of my shows are free, except for MCU later. You have to, you know, you got to 
be behind the YouTube member, you know, gimmick or the Patreon gimmick for that. But it's it, you know, like why not? Just if you're not if you're not comfortable with Patreon for some reason, hey, do the YouTube uh, membership with Post Wrestling. You you get you get us in 10k, man. Maybe in I maybe some people got a 14k. Oh God, no, please. <laughs> we're we're like I'm mega pixelated or something at this point. Anyways, there's my pitch. You know, you know, and I'm see you later. I I I slandered the uh, the freeloaders, and at least one person said they signed up in the forum. They said I signed up to hear more WH Park at MCU later because I don't want to be a freeloader no more. And so there you go. So all you freeloaders, if you want to hear me on MCU later and see what the greatness that I I spew out there, <laughs> talking about Marvel <laughs> movies, comic books, my hatred of Mace Windu. Just you gotta sign up for that. I, I hear you have a special guest on the, the upcoming episode of MCU later. This coming it, it's weekend. one uh, Karen Peterson. Oh, that's you. <laughs> it's me. They're getting a double yes. shot of us in the same week. I don't know how the world will survive. I don't know. Well, well, you know, I I would ask you, Karen, what your opinions of Mace Windu are, but we'll save those for MCU later. Yourself, me, rich fan. We're, our, we're gonna our boy, rich fan. That's right. Rich fan is fan. amazing, except he loves Mace Windu. I have a differing opinion about Mace Windu, oh, but I won't. Lord. I won't go into it fully here because it's not the really the the platform for that. But uh, but we'll we'll get your thoughts about Mace Windu as a as as a Jedi <laughs> in, uh, on MCU later. Is it, and we'll is talk about Loki season two too, as well. <laughs> is it a Windu or a win Don't I don't know. We'll find out. Well, we'll find out, won't we? You know what? Like I <laughs> I was uh, I, I was uh, texting with uh, John Pollock. And 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 I just to say, like, I don't know if you had seen it yet. I was talking to him about uh, a match we're talking about today is uh, Kento Miyahara versus a uh, triple crown champion, Yuma Aoyagi. I watched it. Did you watch it, right? I'm, re I'm ready. <laughs> just tell him my thoughts about it. He 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 messed back and he's like, he chimed in. And then uh, he brought up Katsuhiko Nakajima. And then he asked me, oh, do you think he you think he's staying long term? And I said, well, you'll have to, well, John, you'll just have to listen to Post Perez later to find out the answer. And he said, that's a good, perfect answer. So John, John's <laughs> definitely uh, listening right now. And he's like, he had better be. shut the fuck up and just get to <laughs> what you think about Katsuhiko Nakajima. That's what he's thinking right now. Wait for it. it. Be patient. Be patient. And if he's watching this on the YouTube, he might not be because his kids could walk in and hear me say the F word all the time. Uh, he, he will like, see this wonderful banner and he's going to send me a message and he's going to say wh that banner was maybe the one of the greatest banners not maybe not in the top three because most of those would be created by way but maybe it maybe it's in the top 15 this this banner you have created but we we, we will uh we don't need this banner i've got one more banner later you'll you'll see, see you? it later if you're on the youtube <laughs> see you can't see the banners if you don't go on the youtube right there you go and this, this show is free, so there's no excuse really not to click on the We're YouTube and just, just click a like. It away. Get, give it a like. Get, subscribe. Hit that notification bell. The whole whole kit and caboodle. So that being said, I, I before we get into the Japanese stuff, right? I just want to talk about American wrestling because, my God, it's so funny out there. And 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 did you know, Karen, that Impact Wrestling has become is going to rebrand itself to TNA? I did. I did see that. And now I'm confused. But I, I guess for those who have the TN, the, the long term TNA nostalgia, it's a good thing. I've spent so many years pr pr practicing calling it impact that now I have to retrain my brain to start calling it TNA again. So and not to be outdone, you know, not to be outdone. <laughs> Tony Khan, with his recent signing, uh, has also started turning AEW into TNA. Well, you can't you can't spell Tony Khan without TNA. So, so you know we're gonna have two versions of TNA out there. One the legitimate one, and the one you know it's it's bad enough being WWE light. It's even worse trying to be like TNA light when you want to be the next. When your goal is not to be the next, you know, as a promoter, not as a human being, the next Vince McMahon. When that's not your goal, but your goal is to be the next Dixie Carter. I, I mean, there's something you should maybe there should be someone should step in and intervene and just say Tony. That ain't it. That ain't it, fam. You 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 don't need me. We had one Dixie Carter. That was enough. Maybe you want to be the the next. You want to be the first Tony Khan and, and just do things differently and provide a true alternative to the WWE and and, and whatever else is that has been existing before. Because in he was he was he was on his way there. 
I don't know what's yeah. going on with, with that guy. It, you know? it feels like it feels like lately, and this is probably where the AEW stands are to come to get me. AEW is turning more into WWE, and then not the good version of WWE than people are willing to discuss about. So what, I, I, here's the thing: I, mean, I will say, like as a very very casual viewer of American wrestling, yeah. Right now, I I feel WWE is like product wise is is so much better than than AEW because there seems Correct. to be an end goal for all their storylines, except maybe yeah. Roman. I don't know when he's losing that fucking belt. <laughs> and he's, I don't even know when he's going to show up on the show either. Yeah. I, I feel like they're, they're holding out for the rock to actually commit to a WrestleMania. So who knows? Maybe, you know, 12 years from now, we oh, don't please know. do not put the belt on Dwayne. Do not put the belt on Dwayne. That would be that it, it's bad enough. Roman still has it. And he didn't listen to Cody at WrestleMania, you know, anyways. Yes. I, you know what? I, my favorite thing is right now in WWE. Damage What's control. Damage of control is, is fucking awesome. I I love damage I love control. Them. I love them so I, much. I, I love the, the the chemistry of like Dakota Kai, Eos guy, and Bailey. You know the best thing I've ever met Bailey turning heel. People yes. thought that's not gonna work. She's she's a great heel because she's just like she just love. It's just the complete opposite of her babyface character and what she became famous for. And then she just yeah. calls all the fans idiots and like she's she's funny. She's like if yeah. I was in that locker room and I was talking to Candice LeRae or fucking like Bianca Belair or fucking Becky, I this is what I'd be saying to them. If I was if I was if I was a, <laughs> a women's wrestler main event level like uh, like Bailey was, this is what I'd be saying to, to all of them, like to Charlotte, to Becky, all of them. I'd be like slandering them to their face with backup from Dakota. And you know, I don't even want, I don't even want new people to join. I just want this trio. I want it to be like the shield. You know, they never added members to the shield. They kept it. They kept it just the three. They got to just keep damage control. Just the three. Correct. Can I you agree. imagine if, can you imagine if EO brought them to stardom? How amazing would Woof! that be? Woof! Don't tease me with a good time, WH Park. First of all, they, 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 they show up at like some stardom Budokan show and they come down, the three of them. That place would go nuts. I mean, when she was Evie and Dakota Kai did have a run in stardom, I don't think Bailey ever made it over there, but I would have, I would love to see Bailey in stardom. Perfectly honest. They like everyone knows who Bailey is. Like everyone knows who, like if you follow women's wrestling, it doesn't matter if it's Joshi or American wrestling. It, it it doesn't matter. Like you know who most of the WB like main event stars are. You know who yeah. Charlotte is. You know who Becky is. You know who Sasha and Bailey are, right? You, then you yeah, then you're the gonna last, go down. For the last ten years, those have been the names, even when right? they were in NXT. So and then you you know who Bianca is. You know who you know. Of course, Asuka is, and now Io and, and Kyrie before. So like, just show up. That would be that would be awesome. It'll never happen with no. like the current current the current situation uh, politically or anything like that. And I don't see I have any, uh, any of any of those names, any of those three leaving the WB at the moment, because they are, they are, no. <laughs> they like, EO. she's, she's like, she's on cloud nine. It seems like I, I follow her on Instagram. She's always yeah. posing with her belt. It's like, she's, she's so happy to be a WB women's champion, you know, to add I, to I her she, already she, impressive very resume. Short history. The problem. Yeah. So the thing that EO has been through is the same thing that Kyrie and Oscar were both through that, that they were, when they did the, you know, post WrestleMania spearing away of like half of NXT every year, they were always the ones that got left behind to help carry the rebuild of NXT to, you know, transition to the next set of champions. So it's like, she was in NXT for all, like, much longer than she, neither either you know she I think she's actually there longer than Kyrie was and she didn't need to be there that long because no but she's she's making up for it yes like coming in as part of damage control was perfect booking and and like like her story with Bailey and and with Deco be, being tag champs with Dakota was great I thought they were a very great team and then now she's got the story building eventually building to a match with Bailey but this is not yeah. this is not actually the WWE. Uh, you know, Joshi show. <laughs> so well, I, mean, I just wanted I mean, to say EO does fall in the realm of the Joshi because she's there one of the go. names that's synonymous with it. And she does have a title match on Saturday. So we'll see there if it's her, if she walks out with the belt or if Bianca Belair is going to reclaim the belt that got stolen from her. We'll we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. But let, let's talk about ProRes. Let's talk first about Zenihan ProRes, aka All Japan Pro Wrestling. And uh, they, they had uh, a show uh, recently that that featured 
uh, at Corican Hall that featured the uh, V5 of Yuma Aoyagi's Triple Crown title reign, a belt he won from uh, Yuji Nagata back in July, on July 2nd. And uh, yeah, he, he I, I watched this match and I thought it was amazing. I just thought Kento Miyahara brought it and he, you know, he was there to like, he didn't have one of them boo-boo faces. Oh, I'm going to put somebody over. I don't want to look like it. You know, he has no problem putting people over because he is very secure in his position as a top star. doesn't matter if he loses or not. Yeah. Um, and, and that's the best kind of wrestler, you know, very much like Hiroshi Tanahashi in that way, you know, no boo faces on Tana's face when he has to put somebody over. Right. So, yeah. Ken Omirahara, Yumiyagi, and to, and Yumiyagi has been having an amazing year. I have to say, yeah. like, if you look at his like 2023 from January to now, it's, it's been, it's a very impressive. He, he was one of the one half of one of the best tag teams with, with Kento, uh, and they were. Uh, world tag team champions for quite a bit during this year uh they recently lost it to the saito brothers who traditionally i am not a fan of i, I actually think they're quite crap but i gotta say recent matches i've, I've watched their title you know their, their tag team matches including some title defenses um they they've they've gotten more confident they're less uncoordinated and you yeah. know I'm hoping the development continues. And then I can say, you know what? I always like those Saito brothers. And then people will be like, oh, shit, WH, no, you didn't. But they're getting better. They're, 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 they're not quite there yet, but they're, they're, they're getting there. So I'm happy to report that. So I, I want to talk about Yuma because I, I think this is something that should have been done years ago. Him, yeah. uh, you know, uh, Jake, Jake Lee. Uh, it's funny in one year, Noah has established Jake Lee stronger than he ever had in this like the six seven years he's been part he he started off in in all japan for wrestling it's it's yeah. amazing but like this is what they should have done with jake this is what they should have done with naoya nomura these four should have been the guys that they said okay we're gonna build you know like and people don't like some some people don't like the comparison to the four pillars of the 90s but that's that's your model from what you base on right like th these yeah. guys should have been your masawa kawada tawe and kobashi and then you bring in like when you bring in Shotaro Ashino and, and that's that's great. But like he 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 wins the Yuma wins the title from Nagata July 2nd. Big moment for him. He beats a legend in this board who had a pretty decent run with the Triple Crown himself. Yeah. First defense was against uh, one of his co-highs, Kokoto Omori, on July 22nd. Decent little match. Nothing to write home about. Uh, his uh, second defense was against another legend, another Triple Crown legend, Suwama, on August 6th. Uh, he then defended against another Triple Crown legend. And in fact, uh, 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 you know, he's a Grand Slam champion, Satoshi Kojima, on September 3rd. I, worth going to see, I feel. Uh, V4 was against uh, one of the, another one of these up and comers that I think New All Japan is doing a very good job of establishing in the upper tier of their cards. And that's for Yuki Honda. They had their title match on September 23rd. And finally, this, this match on October 21st at Korokin Hall, V5, Kento Miyahara, he defeats him. And it was you know, just just a decisive win, too. Yeah. And Kento looked amazing in the match. Yuma looked amazing in the match. And then afterwards, this is this is a, this was the post match was just as good as the match itself. Because <laughs> who shows up with a bouquet of roses? But Katsuhiko, recently freelance, recently escaping the purgatory known as pro wrestling Noah, uh, mm -hmm. Kento Miyahara. Oh no, sorry, Nats Katsuhiko Nakajima shows up. He. He he believed I I think the story is Karen. He believed mm -hmm. that Kento was going to win the triple crown yep. from Yuma. He's yep. like so disappointed in him because he was going to challenge him for that belt, and yep. then he just takes a bouquet of roses and smacks Kento as hard as he can. The man walks in dressed to the nines in a nice suit and tie, bouquet of beautiful roses, and like you know spider lilies. Walks over to Miyahara and was like, bro, I thought you were going to win. I was ready. I had brought you flowers. You, I was ready for you to win. And just wallops him with it. Throws the bouquet on the ground and just strides out. Doesn't even doesn't even acknowledge Aoyagi. He doesn't say anything to him. He just leaves through the crowd. Yeah, and 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 then like you may <laughs> he gets on the mic and he you know like basically he's challenged. He says like you want a match with me? Okay. We're going to have a match. So they are going to have a match for the Triple Crown title. Uh, Katsuhiko Nakajima versus Yuma Aoyagi. November 5th, uh, this coming uh, 
we are recording on the second. So in three days, they will be having a, a match in uh, Hokkaido at the Hotel Emisia Sapporo, which is, of course, located in Hokkaido. A beautiful uh, prefecture that I've never been to. Me neither. <laughs> Me neither. So Okinawa, like the bookends of, of Japan, uh, Hokkaido and Okinawa are the places I, I still need to check off my bucket list for, for Japan. <laughs> um, but that, that, that's the, that's the show that they're going to be fighting on. Um, I'm just going to run over what they've announced so far. Also on this card, Takao Mori and, uh, uh Yoshitatsu versus Hikaru Sato and, uh, someone I'm not familiar with at all. Sydney Shota Stevens. No idea who this fellow is. Uh, Black Menzere and Tomoya versus Noriyuki Yoshida and Hokai Kumagoro. And if you see the picture of Hokai Kumagoro, he's a, a guy in a black bear gimmick. <laughs> not, that, that's the name, Kumagoro. So uh, there you go. Uh, so I guess it's uh, black bears are, are very famous up in uh, the, pr the prefecture yeah. of, of uh Hokkaido, uh, Atsuki Aoyo, Aoyagi, El Lindemann, and Fuminori Abe. Wow, what a what a trio that is! Taking on Dan Tamara, Rising Hayato, and uh, the Turing in in Japan, in all Japan, Jonathan Gresham, former. I didn't realize Nirvana. he was over there. Yeah, he's been <laughs> he's been in the he's been touring with all Japan for a while now. Uh, I think it's a great it's a great get yeah. for them. Such he's a great wrestler, and like uh, just adds a little bit more depth to to that uh, you know that uh that junior division I, which is is kind of building up i think you would really like the junior division of uh of uh, all japan for wrestling here karen like you got you got you got your uh your your your, your little idol boys like uh atsuki <laughs> and, and uh rising hyatt on you like your 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 pretty boys uh in, in the junior divisions so yeah uh, i do like my pretty boys in the junior division i'm, I'm, I'm not gonna be like oh no that's not me yeah i do i'm I, i'm not, not ashamed it <laughs> You know, Lindemann's current, you know, PWF junior heavyweight champion. Uh, what's not to like about like this roster? And of course, Triple Corn Championship, Katsuhiko Nakajima versus Yuma Aoyagi. Now the question is, and that, that John John Pollock has been waiting with bated breath for us to talk about is, do you think Katsuhiko Nakajima will win the Triple Corn Championship? Do you think he will be staying for some period of time in All Japan Pro Wrestling? Uh, my heart says yes. I think if you if you're gonna make a statement, and you know Aoyagi's had a good run with the belt, but if if, if literally if Nakajima strolls through your front door and is like, allow me to provide you with an opportunity to bring more eyes to your brand, I say put the belt on him. Um, but mm -hmm. then I also kind of want him to challenge Shingo at Wrestle Kingdom for the Never Open Weight Championship. So I can't have no. both, but I'll take either. Who says? Who says you can't have both? Because I feel don't. Sir, <laughs> no, what? so yes, I feel please. my feel my feeling is is like this guy is the hottest since he announced that he was going to leave Noah. He he became the hottest news in Japanese wrestling because where is this guy going to land? Because legit main event star in Noah carry help carry that company on their back along with uh, like when he returned Goshizaki along with Marafuji along with Sugiera like. And and to to some degree, Kimia, until Muto came in and ruined everything, um, he he is someone that my God, there are so many dream matches that are that are on the like money drawing dream matches that are on the table, okay, and this they happen to be primarily in New Japan Pro Wrestling, uh, but you have the one with Kento that is a big one, right? The rematch he they had the match earlier this year, he won that match. Uh, Nakajima did so Kento needs to get that win back and I think he will I think if that's something that if I'm all Japan I negotiate with Nakajima hey we want you to put him over we want you to put Nakajima we want you to put Miyahara over and I don't see Nakajima being like no I'm not gonna do that sure I think he's eventually going to have the match a singles match with Kento and, and put him over uh, might be for the triple crown so I think he will win the triple crown I don't think it will hurt uh, Yuma Aoyagi because he's losing to a guy who's like uh, uh, you know, a bigger star than he is. One, yeah. he's also established himself firmly on a same on a similar level to Kenta Miyahara, I believe. So yeah. it's okay. He's had five defenses of that belt, and they were all like quality matches. Uh, you know, so if he loses, it's okay because you just circle him back into the title picture down the line, and it's 
and it's fine. There's also the idea that, you know, the, the this year's champion carnival winner was Shotaro Shino, and then he fractured his arm and he couldn't cash in on his 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 title match that he would win he would know he would get because he won the champion carnival. So a lot of people think Yuma got the run that it was meant for Ashino. I don't know about that. Like I can see the argument for that, but Ashino is waiting in the wings. He's he's recovering from his arm fracture. He's going to be coming back soon. He is someone along with Kento, along with Yuma Ayagi, along with the aforementioned Riki Honda, and I feel like one of their <laughs> one of their super rookies, Yuma Anzai. Have you seen Yuma Anzai, Karen? I I don't think I have. He is the Karen Peterson type of wrestler. Oh, okay, God. Yuma, Yuma Anzai. <laughs> He's like, he's very much like in the mold of a Katsuyori Shibata, Ayato Yoshida yeah, type of wrestler. You know my type too well. I just want to hold him a picture. But yeah. So yeah. he's 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 getting the super push. Okay. And then okay. you got in the juniors, Asuke Aoyagi. You have in the tag division the Saito brothers who who are who get a lot of a good reaction coming, and then you couple that with you know veterans that like to come work there, including Yuji Nagata, including Minoru Suzuki including Satoshi Kojima because New Japan go. does not use them and New Japan does not mind lending them out to, to All Japan for wrestling. And it seems like these guys enjoy working in All Japan because it's a, it's a bit of a different pace. Probably the politics aren't as prevalent uh, or on a, as, as on, a, on a level that is probably exists in, in New Japan Pro Wrestling because of all the mu much more money involved in that yeah. company. Um, so it's, it's, I, I feel like if people are like getting kind of burned out by like things not happening in so much or like too many things happening in other companies, I, I feel pro all Japan pro wrestling is, is a nice little company like that you can watch. And, and, and I think other people, other fans in Japan are feeling the same way because like if you, I've, I've been watching some of the more recent shows in Tokyo, outside of Tokyo and attendance looks way better. Like just from like looking at the, the screen, like Cork and Hall for that for that Cork and Hall match for Yuma full. versus Ken. It was, it, it was full. full. It was pretty full. Like I, I don't I don't think you could have filled out much more uh, without having like I don't know like N Naito show <laughs> or something like that or Hiro Takahashi or or Tanahashi. But it was it was a pretty full show and like other subsequent shows outside of Tokyo, they look like they're get drawing a really good crowd because I think they've they've the booking along with the fact oh they're pushing these younger guys. They are giving us new stars because that's what wrestling fans want. They want new stars. Correct. They're drawing in uh, uh, people to come back. Maybe they lost them along the way for from various booking decisions from the last year. They're correcting to be correcting these these mistakes, and then yeah. now the fans are are coming back. And it's great to see because I, I try to always try to support all Japan for wrestling, um, and 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 you know I feel like my patience it might be paying off leading into twenty twenty four. We'll you know cross our fingers. Hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, it was one of those things like all Japan's like always been like circling on the corner of my radar, but I never have the time to really go in and watch it. But when, you know, he asked me to come on to this show, I was like, well, I, I, if anything, I definitely need to see that match. And then, you know, Jake Lee versus Keno because, you know, my type. Yes. <laughs> so it was, it, I, I'm going to put this and this is going to be a very hot take. I enjoyed that Yuma Yagi versus Kento Miyahara match then more than 60% of the G1 this year. It was a good match and it didn't overstate its welcome. Like no. I gotta say, I gotta say, I will say most a lot of the G1 did not overstate its welcome for me, to be to be fair. It, it didn't overstate its welcome, but it also didn't get me excited. I was excited to watch this match. And maybe it's because I just haven't watched all Japan in a very long time, but I was just I felt very invested in it. There's there is like a natural history because they are they were tag team partners. They became rivals. They're tag yeah. team partners still, but there's they're still rivals. So you have that formula that has that's very you know traditional in in Japanese pro wrestling of partners becoming rivals and 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 and, and fighting over titles like Masawa Kawada, uh, Fujinami Choshu, you know like it, it's it, Marafuji Kenta. These are like common stories, um, but yeah, it's 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 good. I also think, pardon me, like one one thing that's exciting as well. Excuse me, sorry. Um, is that there's there's like this feeling that they're they're going to deliver all these potentially great matches into the new year, but they also have a relationship with other companies 
throughout Japan, including Big Japan Wrestling, but pro wrestling, which they bring in people like Fumori Abe, who's a freelancer, but he his primary home is Big Japan. Also, Takuya Nomura, who's been partnering with Tento uh, on and off for the last year or so. It's always great to see one of my favorite Big Japan wrestlers come to all Japan. So I, I think it's a, it's an exciting time. And and yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to, like, Nakajima wins. He he can then, you know, challenge Shingo and win that title too. He's, he's a, he'll be a freelancer, right? And I can see, like, New Japan and, and All Japan saying, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll agree to your terms if you want to work both. Like, you know, like, you can't give him the U.S. title. You can't give him the World Heavyweight title. But you can give him the Never title yeah. safely. He shows up for those shows to defend that belt, and and I think it's for him. It's just like this is I'm gonna I'm gonna make. I'm sure he made a good amount of money being being a contract wrestler for New, uh, from Pro Wrestling Noah, especially after the Cyber Fight deal. But I'm sure he had to deal with a lot of like bullshit in in the last couple of years of his being booked, particularly against like the Nosawa Ron guy, like my my favorite wrestler club that I'm gonna protect, like Fujita and Muto. That didn't need to happen. So he he's I think it's it's good for him because he's in charge of his destiny. He he can call a lot of his own shots, like a lot of the freelance wrestlers that do end up working for either or Big Japan, uh, New Japan, and, and All Japan. That the best example I would say would be Minoru Suzuki. Yeah, like I so. like I enjoyed seeing Nakajima in Noah, but I feel like there's like he's done everything. There really isn't anything left for him to do other than go yeah. elsewhere. I mean, yeah. He can come back and visit for like a special exhibition match, another match with Shiozaki, another tag with Sh I don't care. But he needs to go elsewhere and explore the world because there are too many people that haven't seen him wrestle that I think would really enjoy his style. He's only in his 30s. He's in his mid-30s. Yeah. He's in the peak of his wrestling career. He started off when he was 15 years old. He turned pro at 16. He's been wrestling for 20 years. He's a 20-year veteran. With He's wrestled everyone, Karen. He's wrestled everyone in that in the 90s 2000s up until now he's wrestled every major star in a tag or singles he's held multiple junior heavyweight titles in er almost every company he's ever worked in uh and every and a lot ton of tag team titles with his mentor kensuke sasaki so it's, it's interesting i do think eventually he's going to land full-time in, in new japan because i do think he made a comment he made a statement that the triple he's in all japan because he wants to win the triple crown because he yeah. says that that is one of three belts that every wrestler in Japan should want to uh, want to hold. That Correct. that's one. He's he's the other is the GHC Heavyweight Championship, which he has won, and the last one would be the IWGP Heavyweight Title, which he has never won. But he he wants. I think he looks to his mentor Kensuke Sasaki, who has held the Grand Slam of Japanese wrestling titles. He has been a Triple Champion, IWGP Champion, and GHC Heavyweight Champion. So I think Katsuhiko Nakajima. We'll, 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 if that's his goal. I think he knows also the most money he can make is in New Japan. He will get a yeah. nice contract from them. I think, especially if Will Ospreay does indeed leave, I think he will leave uh, at, at the end, at the in the middle of January when his contract's up. I think he will go to America. I think he will go to. I think he'll go to WWE. That's my that's my prediction. Um, there, you're going to need a void in the main event scene, and what better than? Katsuhiko Nakajima, who you can yep. automatically insert there with Tanahashi, with Naito, with um, Okada. That's the, I think that's a big money match. But also, like you know, who else is? There's tons of people he can have rematches with Kenta, where, where Kenta can work to his strength, which is just hit people really, really hard. Okay, so really, really hard. <laughs> uh, and and I forgot if I mentioned this, but one of the conditions, like uh, Yuma Aoyagi said, okay, we'll have the triple crown match. If you win, of course, you become the triple crown champion. But if I win. You have to team with Kento in the real world tag league in December. So Ooh. it's interesting because that would really bolster, I think, attendance for that tour and, 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 and bring a lot of attention that these two former partners, former members, because uh, because Kento was also a disciple of the of Kensuke Sasaki. If they team up for that tag league, that Woo! would be very, Woo! very interesting. <laughs> um, and then build to match so it i i honestly don't know my my gut feeling is is katsuko nakajima will become triple crown champion but yeah. with that with that condition let yuma sit down at the in his post-match you know declaration i feel like there's a there's a possibility that that yuma will will eke through and then and maybe katsuko has a team with kento but 
hey, maybe Nakajima will team with Kento anyways, <laughs> even if he becomes Triple Crown Champion. Yeah, so. or it's a double count out and it's a draw or whatever, and they have to revisit the match eventually. All right. Well, let, 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 that's going to wrap it up for, for All Japan Talk. Let's talk about stardom and, and Joshi in general in, 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 in Japan, Karen. And, and Karen's going to lead us off in this segment. Go ahead. All right. Well, you know, for those who follow us at The Post Wrestling, I do have a monthly column called Dream Slam Monthly. The October edition is available right now where I go through the in Japan international, anyone going to Japan, I go into the scene with a fine tooth comb and I go through everything that I can possibly round up for the entire month. However, since that's come out, there have been a couple of updates. Uh, on October 31st, Nagisa Nozaki, who is was basically the ace of Pro Wrestling Wave, she blew out her knee last year and she's been out at post-surgery rehabbing it for this, over a year now because it was back in the, the spring last year. On the 31st, she announced that once she is able to get back into the ring, she will be leaving Wave effectively, effective of November 1st, so as of yesterday. And she'll be a freelancer. So I'll be curious to see where she crops up. I could easily see stardom making a very, uh, making a play for her in the future because she she is a talent very much like Suzu Suzuki that a lot of people have had their eye on. Um, but we'll have to see. We, she has not announced a return date yet, but we'll wait. And then the rest is basically just a quick and dirty what's going on in November with stardom in New Japan. Uh, next week on the 11th, New Japan Lone Star Shootout, Mayu Iwatani will be defending her IWGP Women's Championship against CMLL Stephanie Vaquer. Vaquer challenged her last week uh, or over the weekend uh, at Las Vegas for the for a title shot. The 12th, we'll have the Goddess Tag Finals, which unfortunately, just like the five star, people are dropping left and right with injuries. And it kind of bums me out. Uh, right now, people who are on the injured list or being kind of held back or off of shows, hoping that they can either work the upcoming big show or the end of the year show. Currently, we have Saya Kamitani, Utami Hayashista, Starlight Kid, Natsupoi, Tam Nakano, who has a title defense in a couple of weeks, and Koguma just got added to the list today. So it really sucks because stardom has gone really hard this year, and I think it's finally catching up with everyone. So I'm hoping that what they discussed in the... Uh, strategy meeting last month the possibility of a shorter five-star grand prix or a smaller field or something because they're a lot of their top tier stars that are wildly popular are now missing the set the the final quarter of the year and possibly the big new year's show that they're going to have on the morning of january 4th prior to wrestle kingdom so hopefully everyone's getting well and healing up soon, but we don't know. And then on the 18th is Osaka Gold Rush. That's going to be their big pay-per-view of the month. Uh, World of Ch Stardom Championship. Tam Nakano is defending against Suzu Suzuki, the 2023 five-star Grand Prix winner. I have a feeling that Suzu's walking out with that felt. That's just what my gut's telling me, especially if the end game is her versus Julia at uh, Dream Queendom in December. Mirai is going to defend the Wonder Storm Championship against uh, Saori Ano. High Speed Championship is May Sarah against Momoka Hanazono because it's in Osaka. And Hanazono is an Osaka local and a big favorite. Sure, and Shuri's going to have a UWFI rules match against the Scandinavian Hurricane Alice Inc. I'm not familiar with her, but she's coming over and they're going to have a match. And then the rest of the card will be announced at a later date. That's, Listen, all, the, that's all the big stuff that's going on. And anything else? Hang out for the, you know, probably around the 24th or 25th Thanksgiving weekend. The next, the November issue of Dream Slam Monthly will be available for your reading pleasure. Listen, I, I know, I know filthy Tom Waller might possibly be listening to this. Listen, Tom, like, wh what are you going to get over to stardom and, and have a UWFI rules match with Sherry, huh? What? You, you need to get in there. <laughs> yes, please. And thank you. <laughs> Uh, Come on, just yeah. just just get over your fear of 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 Shuri and just just get in there, and then no you too like can wrestler. officially you can officially join God's eye like Saki Nakashi uh, Saki did, you know that that's she got over it and she she's a member of uh, of God's eye. You you I know you want to join God's eye fully. You want you want the you want the T-shirt. Come on, Tom. Just I'm sure Bushi Rose takes your phone calls. Just call him up. And say hey, give me that UWFI rules match with. Him. With Shuri. Yes, please. I'd watch that match. <laughs> That'd be a good match. 
I mean, it would be a good match. great match. All right. So uh, anything else for, for Joshi here? Not right now. No, no, it's been relatively quiet. It's kind of that weird, like, we're getting ready. Every Like, a lot of tournaments are winding down, but everyone's getting ready for the end of the year, like the Christmas shows that close out the, the calendar year and then getting ready for the Wrestle Kingdom week, first week of January, New Year, New Year, New Me shows. So, but we'll, we'll see what's coming up. I, I mean, you talk about all these injuries and we talked about this regarding the five star Grand Prix. It's, it's, it's too long. You have too many people in the field. There's too many matches. Correct. Listen, I love it, but it's too much. It. I don't know what their, th their theory is because more is not better equal no but th they're losing money they're gonna lose money because you, you in have the long too many run shows. yes in the long run you're, you're burning out all these towns oh yeah. like i wanted to see mayu oh she's out i want to see i don't know tom she's out because she, they wrestle too much and they wrestle a style that's, that does not does that's not you know lend itself to an american style you know yeah. uh touring schedule this is this is japan they should do two week tours hit hit some major towns some smaller towns that they want to expand into a bigger market later on and then take two weeks off and then go back on the road again but i think with the, the advent of streaming like they feel like you know this is also with new japan right as well they have all these shows that they feel yeah. that need to, to to justify people paying <laughs> the fee to have the streaming service not everybody wants hey i'll tell you this bush road and this is for any other streaming service not everybody signs up because they want to watch something every week that's why you have archives i want to yeah. watch something every week on on new japan world i don't need to see fucking house show in fucking in the Hime, okay i can just i want to watch the fuck that fucking best of super juniors file from 1997 between fucking dr wagner jr and fucking koji kanemoto how about you put that on the fucking streaming service okay anyway sorry that just went off on a rant but things i don't get to see on that world, <laughs> yeah uh, well it, and the other thing is that with stardom is that th they have a pay-per-view every month and it doesn't necessarily like when they're running a tournament it doesn't necessarily have anything to do with anything in the tournament other than the, the fact of running a pay-per-view where they can have all these title defenses but they're you know you pay for the separate and this is my big beef you have to pay a separate ticket fee yeah. for a Bullshit. limited time ticket and then it's put on stardom world but it's broken up into it it's i I need Stardom World to do whatever New Japan World is doing and getting a makeover, but they should be all combined into a single platform as Bushi yes. Fight because they're in the same umbrella company. It's bullshit. <laughs> it's bullshit. I'm not paying for both. I do not pay for both. I'll tell you which one I do pay for. Stardom World. I pay for Stardom World because I feel it's a better value, especially with the amount of our stuff they have in their archives. It's actually a pretty decently... If you want to go back and watch the history of Stardom, like that's a great platform. There's watch. also, but there's also a lot of information gaps. There's, there's a lot of the sure. old, old archives missing, which sucks. <laughs> but there is still enough for you to get familiar yeah. with, like the history of the company. Absolutely, I feel there's tons more gaps in in, in the New Japan. I, I know that it has to do with TV rights, with TV SIE, and whatever, blah blah blah. But, anyways, let's let's talk about some upcoming shows. We're going to preview them. You'll probably be reviewing both of these shows, I imagine. Correct me uh, if I'm wrong. I, we are officially on the docket for Power Struggle on this coming Saturday. We are working out the details for Lone Star Shootout next weekend. All right. Well, let's start off with Power Struggle. Then uh, we are going to have the um, – this is going to be the wrap-up of the, uh, the Super Junior Tag League uh, featuring the teams of Yo and Musashi, Kushida and Kevin Knight, Ryusuke Taguchi and the DKC, El Desperado and Master Wado, Doki, and Takamichinoku, Bushi, and Teton, Robbie Eagles, and Kosei Fujita, TJP, and Francesco Akira, Clark Connors, and Dan Maloney, and uh, Sho, and Yoshinobu Kanemaru. This tour started October 21st, and we'll wrap up at the Osaka Edeon Arena, one of my favorite arenas, Karen, because the air conditioning in the that building is, <laughs> is, is amazing. Okay, so yes. let's talk about Power Struggle. <laughs> um, uh, there, to start off, we're going to get... Okay, so I, by the way, I'm going to go in the order that is listed the match order that is listed oh, no! on New Japan's own fucking website. Okay, <laughs> twenty minute time limit, Frontier Zone match is kind of like a, a junior, like you know, like it's kind of like one of those young lion shows that they used to do, right? Uh, yeah, because they're bringing in from Dragon Gate Mochizuki Junior, uh, Yoshiki Kato, and Strong Machine J taking on X X and X. Who's who are our three X's? My guess, 
I don't know. I have no idea who the three X's will be. Maybe Osaka pro guys because they're in Osaka. They're either Osaka pro guys or juniors that aren't in the the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship match or the Super Junior Tag League final. So it'll be a mishmash of probably like, I don't know, Yo, Robbie Eagles, and ah, Doki. I don't know. It, it's it's going to be some weird, hitty combination that are just like, oh, okay. <laughs> sure, why not? So that's I think that's a dark match, by the way, because it starts at 4 p.m., 4.30 p.m. Uh, so opening, according to New Japan's website, will be... <laughs> <laughs> Will Ospreay versus Shota Umino for the IWP uh, Un- United States slash United Kingdom Heavyweight Championship. I- I'm pretty sure that's not going on officially first. Uh, John Moxley versus the Great Okan. Uh, David Finley versus Tangaloa. Sonata and what? You uh, Uemura? Yeah. He came back? Is he in five, just five guys? He is. He is back and he is. The, 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 what was it? The... the... The, the what is his name? Heat storm, heat something, heat gun. I don't know. Oh, it's not as long as not heat vacuum, like uh, you know, like uh, no, my, my your, your boy uh, uh, Yujiro. He's a heat vacuum. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> my boy Yujiro. I don't claim him. He's not mine. <laughs> uh, anyways, Sonata and Yuya will take on Tetsuya Naito and Yoshiyuki. So it's a it's a battle of peers with uh. Yuya Umura taking on Yosuji. That that's obviously this is a rivalry that they they're hoping to build from from this match going forward. <clears throat> you know, the continuing the burger chain versus the guys from Mexico, but not really from Mexico theme uh, that they've been doing for a while now. Uh, Kazuchika Okada, Tomohiro Ishii, and Hiroshi Tanahashi will defend their never six open weight six men tag team titles against TMDK, Zack Saber Jr., Mikey Nichols. And Shane Hayes. I, I smell a title change here. You think so? I think so. Uh, Hiromu Takahashi will, uh, the, the the former uh, DDT Iron Man heavy metal? metal is it? Wait, uh, I, uh, the DDT Iron Man metal heavyweight champion? Yes, something like that. Now I'm going to look well, at the He's the former champion because his challenger for the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion on this show, Taiji Shimori, uh, is now the current DDT Iron Man champion. Uh, yeah. He's going to challenge for Hiromo's other belt, uh, the the IWGP Junior title, which I do not think he's going to win because I think Hiromo's taking that to Wrestle Kingdom. So, yep. um, But it should be a good match. And, and finally, our main event, Karen, according to New Japan's website, Catch-22, the one of the finalist teams in this uh, Super Junior Tag League, TJP Francesco Akira, will take on. My God, well, I can't believe this match is happening. The House of Torture show and Yoshinobu Katamaru. They're, they're, <laughs> this is the main event for Os- not Osaka Edion Arena two, mind you, in the basement. This is Osaka Edion Arena up main, on the second main, floor. Everyone, the, the, the main arena. Have you ever been to Osaka Edion Arena? I have. I was there last year for Stardom, actually. What but a great, it, what I, a great venue! I love, I that, love venue. that venue. It's great. I, I, I'm okay. Just so you know, just, just, just so I'm not joking anymore. I, th- I'm pretty sure Osprey versus Umino is the main event of this show. I'm guessing so. <laughs> I, I feel like they're gonna shuffle the card the main the day of, but. I don't know how they're going to. I, I I kind of feel bad when it's preference as the Super Junior Tag League at for Power Struggle. Like that's been the whole tour name. And if they don't close the show, it's kind of sad. But I can't not see Osprey versus Umino not closing the show. You know what I mean? I, yeah, I I, I kind of feel. By the way, about Yuya Uemura coming back, I feel like you know he heard he heard about like I man, I like it here in Impact. Oh, by the way, we're gonna change it to T, back to TNA. Okay, see you guys. He decided, I don't want to be part of TNA. He probably thought they were going to bring back Vince Russo to be the booker. He's like, I'm getting the fuck oh. out of here. No, please don't. Let, let's talk about, we, we we briefly mentioned this when we talked about Katsuhiko Nakajima. So Shingo Takagi won the uh, Never title from Tama Tonga, who won from David Finley. Um, so Tama uh, was the transition champion from David Finley to Shingo. Three like, times in a row, he's been a transition uh, champion every time. Wow. Well, Anyways, Shingo won, and then he was like, who's going to challenge me for this belt? And then who comes up to challenge him? Well, I think it's on a TV screen, correct? It was was 
from from best friends Trent Beretta, and he's going to challenge he's going to challenge Shingo at the, the the Lone Star Shootout show. We'll preview in a second here, but also who else tw- challenged him on Twitter? But Katsuhiko Nakajima. So that that match I think will happen. Wrestle Kingdom. I, I'd say that's a dome match, if not dome New Year's Dash, one of the two. But I'd prefer it be at the dome. I I, I do not see Shingo losing the Never Title to Tripperetta, uh, and I do see him actually defending and losing to Katsuhiko Nakajima. But let's talk about Lone Star Shootout. This takes place November 11th at the Curtis Colwell Center in Garland, Texas. We're gonna have Mystico versus TJP. Yeah, the the correct Mystico, not the fake one that they hired over in AW, which would be Drillistico. Uh, Zack Sabre Jr. defending his world television title against Mike Bailey. Uh, for some inexplicable reason, Joey Janela is on a New Japan branded show, and he will take on fellow comedy wrestler Toriano. And if you don't, if you people don't think Joey Janela is a comedy wrestler, I don't know what to tell you. You need to you need to take your head out of the sand there. Uh, the Gorillas of Destiny, the 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 new version, Karen of Hikaleo. At El Fantasmo, soon Hikaleo soon to be bound for for WWE once his contract is up, probably by the end of this year. <laughs> That's my guess. You think so? They are the current uh, uh, strong open weight tag team title holders. They will take on my my favorite team as far as uh, as far as gear goes. Uh, the West Coast Wrecking Crew with uh, Jarrell Nelson and Royce Isaacs with all their tassels. Uh, I, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't think. Uh, I just think because their gear game is a bit better, Hikaleo and El Fantasmo are, are going to retain these titles. Uh, Shigo Takagi versus Trent Beretta, and uh, semi main event according to this this site that I I cut and pasted this this card off of Eddie Kingston, the current strong open weight champion, uh, will defend against probably one of his biggest heroes, Satoshi Kojima. This should be. He also like you know like he's a big fan of Kenny Kobashi. Both of them are both big fans of Kenny Kobashi. They'd like to do the machine gun chops in the corner. So I think we'll see that spot. I even see Eddie probably possibly trying to do the Ichazo Bakayato spot and, and saying it properly. Maybe well in his thick uh, you know Queens, it, it, uh, Queens his, New York it, accent. Was like yeah, his 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 Queens. Hey partner, Ichazo partner, fuck you like that. <laughs> Bakayaro, Bakayaro, fuck you! Uh, and and the Af- the main event it seems like will be the IWGP Women's Championship. The aforementioned Mayu Iwatani, uh defending her title against Stephanie Vakir from CMLL. And uh, you mentioned the Bushi Road uh, strategy con- conference that they had. And mm-hmm. at some point, like uh, they announced this Stardom show, like the morning of Wrestle uh-huh. Kingdom. And then Mayu Itani, you said, told me, because I didn't watch it, but you said she looked over at the president of Bushiro and said, uh, aren't I defending this on Wrestle Kingdom? And that would be my question, too. It was a very awkward moment in the strategy meeting where they basically told her, no, whoever is IWGP Women's Champion will be defending that championship at the Stardom Show at Tokyo Dome City across the street earlier the same day. So there's a possibility I, that with two women's championships that they made a very big deal about in this company, neither of them could not be defended on Wrestle Kingdom this year after the, I, the whole I, big to do earlier this year with Kyrie and Tam and Mercedes Monet. I really want to see a show at K- Tokyo Dome City. It's a nice looking venue. I've, I've never been. Yeah. It's a very, like, if you've seen pictures inside, it's a very nice looking building. And it's where Gleet does a lot of their shows. For, yeah. for youtube and stuff um yeah looks like i would love to try to see a show there at some point in my i life. still need to go to to uh, was it kyoto kbs hall that one with the giant stained glass window that's, that's right. on my bucket list yeah just make sure you stop out of a stop off at a convenience store first because there's nothing around there to eat you need to bring all the like onigiri and shit with you hey, Karage, you know i'm so hungry right now <laughs> that's so good where, where was I? Anyways, that that's uh, November 11th, Curtis Caldwell Center. Maybe, maybe, maybe you'll get a review from Karen in. and my boy, Brewdog Bruce Lord, for that. Doing, doing a great job on all these like uh, show reviews for for, for the There's site. There's so right many of them. I don't like going back to like you know trying to space out <laughs> time to relax. Bruce and I need time to relax. New Japan, can can you not have a show every other week, please? Thank you. 
So we also mentioned this that Hiro Takahashi won the uh, the the DDT Iron Man title. This he did this at uh, the show called God Bless DDT that happened at Corican Hall. He defeated uh, uh, Kazuki Hirata uh, to win the title. It's a bullshit title, everyone. It's, it's like fucking fucking step ladders and a and a blow up doll won this belt. So it's it's got bullshit title. Anyways, hey, and uh, Hiromu's own cell phone won the title. He, Vegas, he won so. the title minutes after Harada defeated uh, then champion Takeshi Masada, and and Harada and and well, I don't know. Like I, I'm assuming Hiromu is going to win this belt because he is slated to have a rematch with it. Harada at Ultimate Party 2023 oh, on November 12th. Wow, that's a, big, that's a big Kukigikan. deal. So where was the, where is that WH? Uh, Rio Goku Kokugikan. I know. Well I don't know done. why you're saying. This the name of this this venue. This is actually also known as Sumo Hall, by the way, everyone. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, so that and also on that card, I was looking at this card. Uh, Chris Jericho will face Konosuke Takesh- uh, Takeshita. Did I say Takeshita? 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 <laughs> sure. Konosuke Takeshita will 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 face off on this card. So bringing in that their AW feud into now is is don Callis showing up in to catch this corner i'm assuming he, he's he's, he's going to be the flight over so uh he's got, maybe, he's got kenny's gonna show up. maybe kenny's going to show up to back up jericho and, and then to catch that will have that's such an I, oddball I, like oddball pairing but yeah i guess you who else is in this the numbers who 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 the fuck else is in? Is it Kyle, Kyle Kyle Fletcher's also now in Don Callis's little circle? Um, okay, I'm Someone guessing at some point Mark, Mark Davis will have to be what you know since sure. they're a tag team and all. Um, I, I think Osprey is also part of that little clique now, maybe because it's. Oh yeah, he's he is he's kind of in there because get because like he's shooting with Kenny kind of on and off, right? Yeah. So, anyways, that that's it for for the New Japan uh, section of this show uh you have any other any final thoughts on any of these big shows karen i'm i'm i i have a lot of super junior tag league to watch before saturday <laughs> there you go a lot let's I, move I on be, might be oh, cherry sorry. picking i don't know <laughs> Let, let's move on to pro wrestling noah and yeah i don't know what to say there's I got, I got a lot of notes here in the sense, like things that a lot of have not happened in Noah, but I don't feel anything's happening in Noah to be quite honest with you. So, anyways, the big news one of the big news is that uh, Jack Morris from the UK from won the GHC national title for wow. national title, sorry, from one of my favorites, Dr. Wagner Jr. Jr. at the <laughs> demolition, demolition stage in Fukuoka. Uh, show on October 28th at the Fukuoka International Center. Did you know Jack Morris's nickname is Sublime every time? I I mean, I approve. He is, of course, in good looking guys. So if he's Sublime what, every time, sure. Why not? What, what, what's Sublime about him? Is he like a fine tasting every, wine? Everything? It, Okay. Is, he, is, he, is he a fucking Alfredo sauce? That, I mean, that's what you, I, when you talk about sublime. You can talk about like wine I or mean, the taste of like a, he's, he's a sauce. He's got the Scottish lilt. He's got the kilt. He's got the championship belt. Right. He's a You're obviously a fan, Karen. Let me tell you what I, I think about Jack Morris. <laughs> oh, Jack no. Morris is a fucking poor man's fucking Drew McIntyre. All right. And and I don't even like Drew McIntyre. So that, 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 that is what I think about fucking Jack Morris. Like this fucking guy who's like, Listen, you're like a sec- third you? tier oh. fucking Drew McIntyre, and I fucking hate Drew McIntyre. I think Drew McIntyre is a fucking third rate Drew, Drew McIntyre, you know, and he's the original. Anyways, for some inexplicable reason, they double championship uh, this this boring dude by also giving him an Anthony Green. Oh my fucking god, they're the GHC tag team champions. What the fuck? <laughs> That's bullshit. Oh, I didn't realize that. <laughs> Anyways, he ended, he, he, unfortunately, Jack, Jack Morris here ended, unfortunately, he ended a 352, 352 day reign that saw Junior Junior successfully defend that fucking title a record seven fucking times, Karen. So good for him. Junior Junior should just now move on to the GHC heavyweight title because he is, he is super popular amongst the Noah faithful because he has really grown. In that company, he's a great fucking wrestler too. Um, but yes, uh, you know, so like him, yeah, Jack and, and Anthony Green 
Why did they just call them like guys with greasy hairs? That's what that's what their real fucking group name should be. They defeated real R E A L. This is the team created by Hideki Suzuki featuring uh, Timothy Hat Thatcher, who is real. He's a real grappler and yes. someone who I don't think is real. Saxon Huxley, because he does like a, a really bad knockoff of Bruiser Brody. Um, and uh, they did. They, they won these titles on September 24th. Why? I have no, I have no idea. He's anyways like, but they're giving the big push to Jack because they're like, maybe this will keep him from, you know, signing with WB when WB finally called comes a calling, and they will because he's got abs. So they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna hire him. Anyone with abs and is white is probably gonna get a call from the WB. Um, Keno. The other big news would be Keno defeat. W w okay, stop me if I'm lying, Karen. Where's the lie in what I just said there? White guy I'm, with abs I'm, getting sorry, getting a call from WB. Of course, I'm that's a fucking <laughs> given. Okay. <laughs> Okay, Keno oh. defeated Jake Lee to win the GHC Heavyweight title in a blistering, blistering 30-minute match on the same card. Well worth watching. They, I'm not a big fan of like this run of Jake Lee's, but hey, you know what? He he he's fucking he's fucking elevated himself with his matches, with his title matches, and he's got the push. They they've been consistent with him. And you know, if anyone he's gonna lose, if there's, if there's anyone he should lose to, it's probably Keno. I would recommend people go watch this. Don't don't get squared by the. It's, it's almost a thirty minute match. Uh, it's it's worth it's worth watching. He so uh, he, Jake won the title from Kaido Kimia back on March ninety. He held it for two hundred twenty three days. Had four successful defenses against Nakajima, against Marafuji, Sugiara, and Shizaki. So he all his title defenses were against established former GHC heavyweight champions. So he didn't have any like. Younger guys coming in and trying to trying to beat him or any, trying to take that belt from him. He defeated all established guys. So this this is booking 101. Okay, it's one of the few smart things that Nosawa Rangai has done in his career as a fucking booker in this company. Is he made sure I'm going to establish Jake because all his challengers and he's going to beat and everyone he's going to beat is a former GHC heavyweight champion and a former established main event level GHC heavyweight champion. Okay, so this he's he doesn't matter if he loses to Keno, he'll be back in that slot. He's in that level. He's in the stratosphere in Noah. Uh, Keno's first challenger will be former teammate in uh, in the now dissolved Congo Manabu Soya, and that met, okay. As we record this, carrot, it's early. It's early November. That match is going to happen on January second. Okay, Ken, you are you're going to have a two month build. For a match that I do not feel is worth a two month two month build, so at some point in this two months, they have to get Manabu Soya to a level where people are going to want because the, the only way people are going to pay for this if they want to see Soya defeat Keno. Okay, yeah. so you have to get him to that level. Do I have faith in the Noah book booking to get him to that level? I do not, but it'll be interesting to watch see if it actually does happen. Did has he ever held the GHC national championship? I don't remember, Soya, but he Soya, has been Keno. Keno. Keno's been national champion. Yes. Yeah, but not not Sawyer, right? I feel like he I had don't like, like, think so. I don't know if I'm confusing him with Kitamiya, but it's like I felt like both of them honestly should have held the GHC national championship first. But it yeah, I, it's kind of if they're gonna wait till Noah the New Year to run this match, it's they're gonna have to do. I mean, I like Soya. I'm just not used to the concept of main event. So it's giving me, I hate to say it, Sonata vibes. Like, can he? Is he able to rise to the occasion? And once he does, is he able to sustain it afterwards? It's funny because like all these guys who are part of the the Muto era of all Japan that came under his dojo, right? Soya, Sonata, these guys are all like now finally getting to a level in, 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 in the companies that they're now in. Right. Sonata finally got to that type that, that, that main event level. Soya is seemingly going to join them. He was, he was a main event guy in Russell one, but that was a smaller company because he, yeah. he, he jumped ship. Like a lot of people did with Muto when he left all Japan to form Russell one. Um, yeah. Like, I, I don't know. Like you, you have to really do something with Soya in terms of like the kind of matches he's going to have between now and January 2nd. Like he's going to have to defeat some big names. I, I do think 
you should put him in there with Sugiera. That's that that'd be a great match. And Shizaki, you're gonna have to have like him have like a decent like amount of time to have like really hard hitting matches with both guys. Um, yeah. And and I think that will establish him. So we'll, we'll see what happens there. You know, I, I've got to say, Karen. You know, like I, I out of curiosity, I was looking at a cage match, which is you know one of the best sites out there for as a resource for people like us. And and of course our own post post wrestling zone, John Cena is a contributor over there because John Cena, do you know Karen that John Cena watches pretty much everything in wrestling? I think I'm convinced he doesn't sleep. Like I feel like all he does is like he has like that the Batman control room with like everything running at the same time and he just stares at all of it. And and he's also playing Spider-Man 2 nonstop apparently. Uh but yes, uh I was looking at Noah's like recent Noah shows from like maybe about a month worth of Noah shows, right? I just kind of looking at the attendance figures, and then I also took a look over at uh, the, the the I think it's the WordPress uh, Hisami's WordPress uh, Noah blog, yeah. great resource if you want to know about uh, Pro Wrestling Noah. And she had a she had an article about upcoming shows, and I'm looking at these these venues that they're having this upcoming tour at. These are all small venues, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking at their recent spate of of shows in the last month or so. Most of them are at buildings that uh, don't have a capacity larger than Corrigan Hall, which is about 1,500 people, okay? Wow. And about 1,500 okay. people is, as far as I could tell, was their, their biggest attendance in the last uh, in, the, in the last month or so. This is for the, uh, or the last month and a half, two months. This was for the Marafuji 25th anniversary, which featured him against Will Ospreay in the main event. So that's definitely going to sell a cork and hall. I, I, you know, yeah. um, but I think you could have had that. You could have had it loaded that show up with a bit more. You could have, yeah. you could have run sumo hall with that show. I think you could have done very, you could have done more than 1500 people, but a lot of their shows are like, you know, they're, they're doing these kind of like okay, magic Monday. There's they're, they're branded. These shows called magic Monday or Monday magic shows. It just I'm sounds like some, what, what that is. Some it's bullshit like, like Monday like Night Raw program? thing or some I don't know what it is. Just some, some some stupid thing that they're doing. Though they're running those in Shinjuku face. Okay. Okay. I, and that's a very <laughs> small venue. I've never that's been like in a Shinkiba style venue, right? Oh, so it's like a lunchbox. Got it. Yes. It's it's a small <laughs> place, right? So their their shows are averaging like the, the only thing that this re recent Fukuoka show that we just talked about with the with the Jack Morris and Keno title wins. This was in the the Fu in Fukuoka. I forget the name of the building, but that that was over. That was just around one thousand three hundred people. So under the Marafuji anniversary show, but you you see like attendance figures in the low 100s like 134 people 124 people uh, up to maybe possibly in, close to 500 people it, it, for for a month worth of tour touring and i i look at that and i'm like that's crazy that's that's not good for what is considered to be you know for the last year, year or so the number two company in japan backed by the, probably a bigger like backing company like a, yeah. in sponsorship company in cyber fight in cyber agent they they have more yeah. money than bushi road and now they can't book like buildings that hold about a thousand or to two thousand people especially for bigger shows that to me is crazy but here's the thing karen they have squandered all their main events in the last three years they've squandered them to fujita they squandered them to muto they have fucked over kaito kimia they have taken any star power he had and they fucked him they fucked him over to new japan who then treated him like shit, and then he came back less of a star. He should have become back as a bigger star, but no, he came back as a lesser of a star because they booked him like shit in the G1, and Noah did nothing to protect him. And this is now why they are reaping what they sow. They're in these fucking buildings that can't draw more than a thousand people, probably can't even hold a thousand fucking people. And and it's sad. It's sad because I feel they have one of the best rosters. They they bring in a lot of international talent that I think. Wow, this, this would be great to see them in significant like programs and leading up to significant title matches. But I have no faith right now in because they the the, the core problem is the booking of this company and and obviously yeah. like Cyberfight feels it because they have slashed they have evidently slashed the budget for, for for them touring in bigger buildings. Well, the thing is, is that like 
their New Year's show that they're having on January 2nd, they're running Ariaki Arena, where, where uh, Historic Crossover was taken. And that is a big building. But if you're if you're hoping that you're going to like pack that building out, you need to start. Do you think that they could actually rehabilitate Kaito Kiyomiya's image now that Muto's officially retired, not retired? We don't know what if he's retired or not. Like, is there a way to salvage what's left before people start leaving like Katsuhiko Nakajima did? No, no, because like you, you start, you have to start building people up from the next crop. You, you have squandered Kiyomiya. Like the only way he can salvage his career, if he leaves. Okay. That's the only way he's going to salvage his career because he is tainted in Noah because they think, oh, he's the, he's the guy that lost to Muto all those times and, and then became his, 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 his bellboy, you know, like, oh, he carried his bags during when he got into the WB Hall of Fame. <laughs> that's what they, well, he actually go, he got sick, but that's what he was going to be. Yeah. That was like yeah. the, the other dude, right? The Inamura guy, the, the big, yeah. the big boy. Like that, that's who they're, they should be hoping to push is, is him. Like, yeah. you know, cause he hasn't been tainted yet. Like I honestly think Kiyomiya should just said, I, Hey, New Japan, my contract's up. I'm leaving. Or he's just like, listen, why did Nakajima leave? One, he probably saw the landscape. And he also probably like saw how he's been booked in the last two years in this company and thought, I've had enough. I'm going to go somewhere else. I'm going to freshen up my career. I'm going to have fresh matches. I'm going to make more money. Right. That's why he left. And he's, and he's, anyone who's watched for us, like no one's not like some, some blind like put blinders on and just like blindly follows this company and like slays. Oh, they're amazing. No, there's a lot of problems in this company. Yes. There's some good stuff in there, but it's, it's overshadowed by a stale, by stale booking. They, 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 they don't commit to people. The only person they committed was someone they brought in over from another company. Karen is that yeah. Jake Lee got the push that Kaito Kiyomiya should have got last year. That's 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 how sad this company is. It's like, and I would say Kaido Kimia is is more of an investment than Jake Lee is at this point now. Like he's a he's a long term investment. And like right now, I know that he's you know helping out with Ryohei Oiwa's like domestic excursion instead of sending Oiwa internationally. He's doing his his excursion over at Noah, but Kaito should. I don't want to say he's babysitting him because Robbie Eagles is kind of doing the same thing with Fujita as part of TMDK. They're now they're tagging together in tag league and stuff like that. But it's like I could ostensibly see Kiyomiya leaving at some point, at you know, because he's helping out with New Japan talent in Noah. But also, I still stand by my argument that Kiyomiya should have been the one to pin Sonata in the G1 and get at least get a title shot. Yes, we talked about this. Yes, for sure. Like, it's like ridiculous. I'm still mad about that because I, I just feel like when he was in the G1, there was an opportunity, and it kills me that they just clowned him out. Like they could have done something with him to make him bring more eyes back to Noah, and that's unfortunate. And I don't think he can't keep showing up in New Japan and losing. So if he shows up there again for if they're going to do another Wrestle Kingdom crossover show that kind of crops up two weeks after Wrestle Kingdom's over. They need to book this man better. They need to do better by him. The only way they're going to book him better, Karen, is if he signs a contract with the champ for wrestling. You know, that's the only sure. way. And I, I guarantee you, I, like, if he does that and he goes back to Noah for guest spots, they're going to book him better because he's a New Japan contracted wrestler. Listen, the reason, fine. the fact that New Japan sends Oiwa to Noah as an excursion, like, that that shows you what their perception of Pro Wrestling Noah is. Is like you are a little territory for us that we're gonna send our guy to get seasoning there. We're not gonna bother sending him to Mexico. We're not gonna bother sending him to the United States. We're gonna send him to Pro Wrestling Noah because that's we think Pro Wrestling Noah is a third rate company that he can get some seasoning in because there's talented people there. But he's not gonna get enough exposure like as, as you know because that's what you do with excursions is you send them to get seasoning. To yeah, where to they're not going to get other styles. I, I don't. I, I feel like it's a disadvantage to Oiwa because he's not learning about the styles of other countries, and that, that yeah. that's the one thing I always liked about it was like you know you learn about the UK scene and how like they're more technical, and then you like the US indie scene, which is just the Wild West, and everything's a little mix of everything. And we're sending them to Mexico, or have them learn some lucha. I just, I just don't. 
I feel like putting him in Noah as an excursion, I don't want to call it lazy, but it feels lazy. <laughs> well, I don't, I, I mean, I don't know what is. he's going it to learn lazy. other than he just gets the chance to wrestle different people. It's lazy, and it just and, and I think it's embarrassing that Noah agreed to this. <laughs> that they're like, we're not, we're not like your fucking backyard, like you know what I mean. We're yeah. not your like you're not your farm system. It's we're not your NXT. That's what they. That's what the perception is. Is like fucking pro wrestling Noah is the NXT for 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 New Japan's main roster. And and like if I was them, I would have said no. Why? My I'm baffled because they potentially have more. They should have more money to be able to say to them, we don't need you. We don't we don't want your help because we have Cyber Agent. We're part of Cyber Agent. We have. Uh, you know, we have billions of yen at our disposal potentially because like Cyber Agent has all these fucking mobile games that they make billions of yen off of every day. <laughs> you know, it's crazy like that, 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 but this is the perception. Like you get that the parent company doesn't care about. Yeah. Like here's the thing. Bushi road cares about new Japan, you know, because it's a, it's a big source of their income for their, yes. for their, for the what, quarterly reports to their investors and whatever they have. Right. they, a little less so for for stardom it seems because you know like if they did they would have mayu watani on that show on wrestle kingdom itself. on wrestle kingdom that. yes yes right that's and we'll, we won't get into that but <laughs> anyways we will we'll uh well our last piece of news from pro wrestling noah let, let me just get this banner up uh <laughs> okay so yeah uh masada tanaka by the way if you know this no sal rangai decided you know what we need Another fucking title in pressing another Noah. another championship. So he's brought back the, the the formerly defunct GHC hardcore title that was that was started in the Masawa era by Junakiyama. Um and and so they, they said who's gonna who's gonna become our first champion? Well, who chimes in but but GCW regular and no pressing no regular ninja max said I'm gonna be the first champion. Who's who am I gonna challenge for this fucking belt? Well, who else but the hardcore legend himself? No, I'm not talking about Mick Foley. The real hardcore legend, Masato Tanaka. So they had a match at uh, on October 23rd uh, on Monday Magic Episode 2, which, by the way, apparently didn't sell out until they announced that the great Muda was going to make an appearance. Not to wrestle, but to, just to show up in his fucking gimmick. And apparently, that show sold out like that because a real star. I guess all I wanted about my negative feelings about Green Minute, but a real star was going to be at the show that then they said, oh, well, we got to see, even if he's not wrestling, we got to see a real star. So anyways. Um, but y'all have seen him. They've been seeding him. He's been, he's been around for how long since the dawn of time? <laughs> he's 60 years old, everyone. He's the biggest star for us and Noah has had in the last five years. <laughs> That's... House. Anyways, I've said I've said more than my fair share about what I think about how Keiji Mudo was booked in, in, in pressing Noah to at the expense of everyone else, and they're paying for it now. You see it, Karen. You're you're seeing it in in, in cold hard attendance numbers, like that they are paying for for their lack of, um, you know, like uh, foresight. They're look they're they're paying for the lack of vision for the future by just squandering and 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 like selling out all their younger talent to like these guys that wrong guy, no sour wrong guys it's, it's just a stupid mark for anyways uh yeah Masato tanaka he's you know there's more belts no one cares anyways i think that's gonna wrap it up for this episode of post perez um i hope people enjoy it this is this is going forward you know park and peterson peterson park I mean, A comes before E in the alphabet, so parking. I mean, it is your show. I'm just, I'm, uh, you're, you're in charge, senpai. I'm, I'm just the new kid here. So this, ne? Not a hold, ne? So this. Yoroshiku onegashimasu. Hi. Anyways, that's it for this show. But guess what? You know what's being else, else is coming out around the same time as this, this show, Karen? MCU what? later. Rich fan. Myself and special guest Karen Sensei herself, Karen Peterson, will be talking about Loki season two, episode five, the penultimate episode. Have you caught up? I'm working on it. <laughs> You're working on it. 
just just be ready by Saturday. You have yes. you have a couple more days before we have to record. I I haven't yes. watched it because I'm recording this with you. It's it's I gotta go watch Loki season five season uh, season two episode five right after this, and then the three of us will talk about it. Also, uh, last week we released the, the new episode of the Long and Winding Roll Road, uh, talking about uh, Terry Funk's first retirement match, uh, his greatest retirement match. And also his importance to the history of all Japan for wrestling. I talk with Braden Harrington from Poison Rana about that fun, very fun show. I shot, I, I recorded that on location at the BDE Towers. Karen, it was a, it's a fun time. And uh, have you seen their, their Halloween costumes, by the way? Davey and Braden's Halloween costume. I, I, I was spamming them on Instagram with messages. I, was, I loved everything. They looked like they yes. had such a good time. Like, I am very much a homebody on Halloween. So I appreciate the people that, that are able to put together costumes and then go out and do things. Yeah. So for those of you who don't know, go on to the Instagram, Poison Rana uh, Instagram, and, and, you, and or Braden or Davey's personal Instagrams. You can see um, Davey doing a very, actually, if you see the videos, you can see Davey doing a really spot on uh cosplay of seth rollins current version of seth rollins um with the you know doing this stuff 25 and, out of 10 with and, 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 but i gotta say you know topping it is is brayden as skewers in the head bloody john moxley <laughs> it's amazing I, when i saw these pictures they they hinted they said do you want to know what we're gonna do for halloween so to figure it out and they i said no it just surprised me on on halloween and then i saw their instagram and i was like Thank, I'm glad I didn't know because I, I think I don't think I don't think I would have imagined they, they would have been as this good, especially Braden. Braden's that just inspired. But anyways, kudos to to our friends over at Poison Rana for having uh, what looked like an amazing uh, Halloween with their friends as well. OK, Karen, you have any plugs for yourself? Uh, again, Dream Slam Monthly will be out near the, the last Saturday of this month. Uh Bruce and I will be bringing the, ba the band back together again for another weekend show. Uh, Power Struggle this coming Saturday. And then we'll be doing, we'll be recording. Hopefully, if we can get the schedule to work out, we'll be doing a Lone Star Shootout. And then that's it for me for this month. I don't know about December just yet. Yeah, so we'll be back. You and I will be back December. I, I'm thinking we're, we're going to do a year-end, year of a. 2023 year-end review basically on on that show and then uh well maybe i think of bringing someone on for that well, we'll I'll, i won't disclose who that is until we get closer to the date i'll ask that person um but yeah karen can be found of course uh new japan reviews this show mc later guest spots she she runs the gamut people like you can find her at the grapple uh podcast sometimes you, you know, love sometimes grapple she does some uh some stuff for poison rana you know with the with the bde and uh i don't know let's say until next time sayonara